If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. What are you doing this Thursday night? Why not drop by Sullivan's Steakhouse on Light Street, a fabulous dining room, a sexy bar, jazz music, $5 martinis, and food specials. Seafood, steaks, and value. That's Sully's. Hi, this is Jerry Reinhardt at Dallas Tavern, and I'm talking to Bill Ripley. First of all, though, everybody's hit on your past uh, baseball exploits, but I have to ask. Yes. You were known as a great fielder. You were a decent hitter, but what, do you think steroids are destroying the game? I know you said it's turning off the parents, but what do you think it's doing to the baseball itself? Uh, I think steroids has changed the game. Uh, I really do. And now that I sit here and I look back on it, and I wonder how many people were doing it when I was playing, uh, and how many people were the fringe players that were doing it, and then I always take a little offense to that, because I know I did everything on the up and up, and I'm sitting there looking at another person, did you do something to enhance yourself that might take a job away from you? So it, 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 it's definitely changed the game, I think the numbers are inflated. I'm hoping right now that this young, talented group that we see coming in in the Major League Baseball stays clean because they are an impressive group to watch. So I'm hoping for that. Well, I say just, uh, the players I'm thinking, Brett Boone popped off, popped off my mind. A player that's had numbers a little better than you, but all of a sudden he just jumped up. And he became a killer and then comes out that steroids were a factor and he's gone. Uh, so there's a lot of flash in the pants. Uh, you talked about your dad, but I thought it was one of the greatest things. He's your little kid, you get to sign on, you get some sign on grass. Your dad took about five, ten minutes left to talk baseball, and he just was the world away. I mean, is, is there anything that you picked up from him, you and Pat, I know this is your teaching kids, but is there one golden rule that he taught you that's just the most important thing to do? I think the best thing Dad could ever tell me when I first went away to play ball when I was 17 was take care of yourself and everything will take care of itself. And Dad wasn't talking about, you know, don't drink too many beers, don't, don't get your sleep, but really worry about yourself on the field. Don't worry about what you can do, don't worry about what they can do, um, and you can play this game. I, I, I knew at a very early age I could not do the things that Cal could do. He's six foot five, he's 225 pounds, and I was about 280. Um, he, he did things physically better than I did. And I knew that I had to worry about myself. I had to control the things that I could control. And Dad, from a very early age, when I first started my professional career, really enlightened me to that and always reminded me every year after that. You know, all the time we were together, say, look, dude, stay within yourself, worry about yourself, you'll be in the club. And if you do those things, most of the time, it works out in your favor. Okay. We'll go back to the world baseball class. Um, you are a coach. Why is it that all around the world, Asia, uh, South America, Puerto Rico, the, the, this series was so important in America, it was just kind of like, that. you didn't have people going out to the bar to watch the games. You didn't have them get excited about it. What is the difference of why is it America excited about baseball? saying, please don't get hurt. But I think in a lot of other places, because we've got so much going on in this country, I think in the other countries, it is the biggest deal to them. But to a baseball fan here, because it was, it was done the way it's been done for as long as it's been done, their individual team seems to take precedence. I will say this, the guys that were in that locker room wanted to win. There was no question about their desire and their attitude. And there's enough young players on that team that four years from now, we ask them again, they will not hesitate to say, to say yes. So I think we're building in that direction. I'm hoping that this fan base starts to rally around a little bit more. But look at it this way. The USA is 116 of the WCC. Right. And as you mentioned, all around the world, what Bud City was trying to accomplish is grow this game globally. They were setting TV marks in, in other countries. So the WBC's is doing what it was set out to do. Their fans are going long. They bring the drums. Yeah. They, I mean, they really go in for it. Would it be better if they moved it from spring training to after the World Series? I, I just think part of the reason is it's, it's, it's during spring training. And you start to follow the team and have the team's broken up. Spring training is still going. It would be better to move it. I don't know after the World Series because I think the players will be in shutdown mode because then you're only getting the playoff teams. You're not going to get some of the other players off the other teams because they're in the shutdown mode. But I'm thinking that maybe you play something like a prelim round in, in spring training and then maybe every four years or so they all start to have a final four. Okay. And, and take that out there and really blow out an all-star weekend where, you know, college basketball final four does what it does. 
I don't see why not baseball could do the same thing with the WBC. And it's every four years, it could work. All right, this is Jerry Reiner, Babylon. Thank you much, Jerry. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right. Give it up for Jerry. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. 